You do this DJ deal and it's, it's a little over 90 million. It, you know, you close on it December of 2021. You're almost, you're, you're over two and a half, you know, roughly two and a half years into being public. And it's the first kind of lo- sizable transaction. Now, this is my own logic stream and I'll let you comment on it. You guys are 65% held by private equity out of the gate. Um, a lot of the assets that start to come to market of scale that a public would be the logical buyer for are private equity held, right? So there, and, you know, Kimball, a lot of their acquisitions have been of, of private equity backed companies. So you have Kimball who comes out of the gate with no private equity, but then they get private equity layered into their stock through their growth model. And then they, they, you know, experience private equity overhang. overhang. You, yeah. you may, and you know, they exit, Stock goes down, it's rebounded nicely, so happy days. But was there any consideration of, hey, we already have 65% held by private equity. If, we, if some of these deals in the market, if we have to do a, you know, a share offering, and now we go up to 70, 75, 80% held by private equity, that, that's a challenge in terms of getting investor interest and maybe how the, the shareholders will react to it. As a result, we're, we'll look at the deals, but ground game is, is, you know, we're able to continue to grow and we can stay within our uh, revolver and, and use existing cash flow. And then, you know, you fast forward to when you did the deal, the private equities have gone down to less than 10%. So you're not in that position. And, you know, your stock is rebounded nicely, markets are in a better place. And the seller was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a large family office. So you don't have that private equity decision. And then the deal recently was with Echo and Echo's got you know, family offices and institutionals and a pension fund behind them. So again, not private equity. So that, that logic stream, is that, am I jiving? You know, if I, am I on the right path here? What are your comments? Yeah, so I think you know, we're not scared to incorporate you know, a private equity firm into the capital structure via a large deal. I think you know, that there's, um, you know, a number of private equity backed deals that have come to market, not all of them trade, you know, one of the biggest headwinds that we face is just the seller's reservation price. So that, that, that happens both in the face of ground game deals, as well as the larger marketed deals. Um, you know, I think the beauty of what we've accomplished to date and that, and so that's that whittling down of the private equity overhang from 65% in April of 19 to less than 10%, you know, after these most most recent sales announced by Pinebrook, uh, is that you know we can, do have the opportunity to layer in a private equity backed deal and offer them stock because shareholders understand that we do a good job managing the sell down of those private equity held assets or shares in our company. And so, to me, it's just another indication of the great job that we've done. You know. It's, it's a very gradual process. Shareholders understand we manage it. The people that have been shareholders have done a good managing job managing it. And so, uh, you know, to the extent a great deal is out there and we can, uh, and we, we do see a need to issue shares, we're not gonna be scared of doing that. And, and uh, you know, to me, you know, an important facet of that is, you know, not drawing down debt too much because we've always talked about uh, being very disciplined in terms of our capital structure, you know, not wanting to exceed, say, one and a half times debt to EBITDA, um, because that really eliminates a lot of issues. One, uh, when there's downturns, you know, our industry is full of examples of cyclicality and, and massive price swings. Um, you're not forced to take irrational actions, and those can include layering on hedges that six to 12 months later can be very punitive or having to go out there and undertake divestitures in the worst part of a market and said, you can control your own destiny. So, um, you know, you'll see us be very cautious on the debt piece, but you know, I think, you know, uh, we do have flexibility. There are, there are deals out there. We're talking to people uh, about transactions, but we, we've always indicated that, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, the thesis behind going public was to consolidate. And so we'll continue to do search after larger deals and maybe deals even larger than the $100 million transaction that we did here in the fourth quarter. Um, but, you know, our job uh, is to be very disciplined in our underwriting and make sure we as a, uh, as a company are paying the right price. 
And so often that right price can't be the, isn't necessarily the seller's right price. And so there's gotta be a meeting of a meeting of the minds in terms of valuation. And so.